Hey guys and welcome back. So with the release of the Zabbix 7.4 there are many new features and one of them is supposed to make the life of people who just joined the world of monitoring and the world of Zabbix uh, much more easier because uh, there is a pretty steep learning curve and some things might not be easy so it's always good to simplify things wherever it is possible and uh, today I just wanted to talk about and basically try out myself the new host wizard which is something like we are used to see in a windows whenever we're installing something we're doing some magic uh, there's pretty often are some wizards that are simplifying our job to configure some stuff and for this task i have uh, zabbix 7.4 um, latest version 7.4.0 running from the docker on my wsl2 machine um, not entirely a machine if you want to learn how you can spin up your zabbix you can just search for that and you will find my videos for sure but basically within the zabbix like all of the monitoring is about a host right so host essentially is a data source which we're monitoring from which we're gathering some data and on a host we're creating items which are responsible to collect the data like there could be an item for uh, cpu utilization item for free disk space item for a service running or not and so on create triggers, add some graphs, low-level discovery rules, and all the good stuff. But creating a host is, I don't know, for someone who just starts to use Zabbix, Zabbix, it might be a bit confusing, like you need to, and there are quite many tabs that you can use, right? And if you don't know what you're doing, it could be frustrating. So for that, we have a new button here. As you can see, it's a host wizard. And basically, when you click on it, we get a pop-up message, welcome to the host wizard. The host wizard will help you set up your monitoring target, device, application, service, and other stuff in the Zabbix. You can always access host wizard from data collection and hosts. Um, do not show welcome screen. So apparently I believe like for the first time it's fine, but next time we're gonna be using uh, host wizard, we probably don't wanna see this um, over again. So check do not show welcome screen and go to the next so what we can see here is uh we're obviously going to have like three uh, steps first one will be select a template then create or select a host and a few more steps some templates 272 of them are incompatible with a host wizard see how to update them custom templates are not supported so we're able to work apparently only with the temp templates that are coming out of the box and uh even then, not all of them, because I have just a clean installation of the Zabbix 7.4 uh, with all of the available templates out of the box. So how to update them, templates out of the box, template upgrade to upgrade existing templates or add new ones after a Zabbix upgrade, go to the Git repository in the branch selector. So this supposedly should be to upgrade your templates from, if you're upgrading from from the previous Zabbix versions like 7.0 to 7.4. So I'm not entirely sure why here in the clean installation of the 7.4 still 272 templates are not supported, but some of them are supported. So this should be fine for our trial. And we need to select a template. Here we can type and search, like if we plan to monitor, let's say Linux server or perhaps Windows and options here on the bottom are changing based on what we type in. So I will use uh, Linux by Zabbix agent. And uh, what else we can select is how do we actually plan to perform data collection? Will it be agent based, agent less, or all of them? So to know this, which we need to select, we actually need to know what's going to be inside uh, the template itself, what kind of items there will be. Will there be items for just Zabbix agent monitoring or, I don't know, some simple checks. And from here, I'm not sure if we can see it. it looks like not. I would really want to see like a list of all of the items and their types. But again, that would be convenient for me, but uh, some dark space for someone who just uh, starts working with a Zabbix. So I will select all just for the sake of, uh, let's see how it goes. Um, okay, so this is for the template filtering. Yeah, so 
rewind back. So whenever you see all of your templates, they're actually filtered by data collection type. So if we select all, we will see all of the templates supported by all sort of different data collection types. We can select just agent based or agent less. And this will just change um, the list of the templates that we can choose. But getting back to the stuff that we're going with a Linux by Sabix agent, uh, click next. Then we need to create or select a host. The template you selected, Linux by Zabbix agent, must be linked to a host, an entity in a Zabbix that represents your monitoring target. Hosts are organized into host groups for easier management and access control, like host name. Let's create a new one. I will call it uh, Linux uh, server. Let's make it like this. And host group, this is a mandatory thing uh, for the Zabbix. You cannot create uh, a host without assigning it to some sort of host group. And host groups are also used uh, for permission delegation. Like if you want someone to allow, um, have an access to your Linux server, you are assigning them not specifically to your Linux server host, but to the host group. And the user will immediately get access to all of the hosts inside this group. So we can click next, then, then install Zabbix agent. The template you selected Linux by Zabbix agent requires Zabbix agent to be installed and running on your monitoring target. Skip operating system selection if you already have Zabbix agent installed. I don't, and honestly saying for this video, I don't want to install it uh, at all. So basically, um, the address of the Zabbix server here, since I'm running um, Zabbix in a Docker container, it shows Zabbix server. It's not going to really work if you want to connect to your Zabbix server outside of Docker environment, right? If you want, if you have some remote host. So for this, you would need to use actually um, the real IP address of the system where your Zabbix server is running. And for me, it would be basically a local host and the default port of the Zabbix server 10051. Configure encryption. This happens to be a mandatory thing uh, with the host wizard, which I personally don't like so much. Um, I believe users should have an option to choose whether or not they want to use encryption. But if you go with this way, you need to create a PS key. So certificates are not supported in the wizard. So you create, you figure out your uh, identity. That can be something, whatever. Then you generate a new PS key and select operating system for your monitoring target, whether it's going to be Windows uh, or Linux. So that's going to determine how you actually install the Zabbix agent itself. And if it's a Linux, then there's basically just a command to download uh, installation script, which will install the Zabbix agent on your host. So you basically just grab and copy paste this in your Linux CLI, and this will install the host with all the right parameters. So here it is taking the IP address of my Zabbix server, which I entered here. Here is the PS key uh, identity and the key itself. So this is all you need to spin up the agent. If you go with a Windows, you need to choose Windows 10 or server or some older versions and set up the Zabbix agent on your monitoring target by executing the following PowerShell script with the administrator permit permission. So you need to access the PowerShell and then again, uh, copy paste the first line, then copy paste the second line, which again has all of the required fields uh, for us. So we'll go with the Linux, uh, click next and add host interface. So this will be the template you select the Linux by Zabbix agent requires the agent interface to be added to the host Linux server. In our case, agent must be configured, configured and enabled on your monitoring target. So I don't have this right now just because I've ignored the previous step. But you sh if you have an agent, this should be fine. And here you basically specify the IP address or DNS name of your Zabbix agent, not the Zabbix server, but the agent host, which you are planning to monitor. And the default port for the agent is 150. Uh, if you do not change that, then feel free to leave it blank. So we can click next. Then it's just a review of everything that we're doing. The template you selected requires additional configuration official Linux template, it requires Zabbix agent 7.4 or newer, which is actually not true. Um, it's still going to work in a 7.2, 7.0. I'm pretty much confident with that because there are no specific metrics to be monitored. So I believe you can ignore this number even if you have some older version. 
Uh, notes on file system, file system discovery. XT432, file system reserve space for privileged usage, typically set of 5% by default. BTRFS allocates a default of 10% of the volume for its own needs to mitigate potential disasters. File system usage triggers are based on the maximum available space. So it's just an explanation of some uh, trigger thresholds and some values that are being utilized in the template. Just for your information, click Next. Uh, configure a host. To complete the setup, configure the following variables host macro. Second, since the last Zabbix agent seen. Um, this will... Yeah, this will basically check availability of your Zabbix agent, and if it's not going to be available for the three minutes, that's going to be a problem. Here you can configure all of the thresholds for your triggers that are coming from this Linux uh, monitoring template. So these are the default values. If you want, you can override them, like the threshold for the memory utilization. You will receive a notification when it's going to exceed 90%. Uh, I believe it's in the percentage. If you want to change it, uh, feel free to change it to something else. And the same goes for all of the other uh, values. And here are the filters for the low-level discovery. Um, low-level discovery are discovering a bunch of the stuff on your systems, and sometimes you do not need uh, anything. So you can filter out by the name and say that uh, like file systems will be discovered if they will uh, match, include these strings like btrfs x2 x3 x4 uh, xfs ffs and so on and so on so these file systems will be discovered and monitored if the file system you're planning to monitor is not in this list then it's not going to be detect detected and the new items will not be created so click next configure host click create to complete the setup create and configuration completed host added successfully finish and if we go back to the data collection hosts we have a new linux server host right and uh, ps key is enabled by default so we would we did not have an option to disable that and uh, there we go we have a host so um just for comparison i've actually while i was doing this i was thinking does it really make your life easier because if we create a host without a host wizard we basically need to create host uh, host name Linux server manual uh, templates start typing Linux by Zabbix agent host groups is again the same that we previously provide Linux server and kind of that's it uh, cannot inherit item key with agent host name of template because the host interface of agent is required. So see, still you can make some mistakes. We need to create an agent interface because the template is using agent to monitor. So local host, click add. There we go, we have a manual host. With the only difference that if right now we want to override some of the trigger values here, you need to go specifically in the trigger, like uh, in the template, where if we plan to utilize uh, the macroses, then we go to the macroses and override the values here, like agent timeout. Remember, we had a three minutes um, file system utilization. If we want to change it, we do it here. If we don't want to change it, we're just free to leave all of the values by default, and it's going to be monitored in a way as it is specified in the template itself. So let me know what you think about this feature in the comments. I really would want to hear that. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and we're going to see you in the next video. So goodbye.